Let's continue working with the Camera Raw interface. You'll find at the bottom here the ability to save this image. And then you also have the ability to look at the workflow by clicking this little blue text. What you can do is choose a color space. You can choose the bits per channel. You can look at the size here and the resolution. And then you can also choose to open this image in Photoshop as a smart object. I'll go ahead and cancel that. Once you're finished playing around with the interface, you can also click here where it says open image to open this into Photoshop. And if you're finished working with Camera Raw, you can also click done or cancel. Up here, by the way, you can always click here to see your before and after. And you can click this button to look at your stuff in a more full screen mode. But Camera Raw is pretty large, so you're not really going to get a much bigger image here. And of course, we see we have our histogram, which changes and updates as we apply our effects. So what I want to talk about now is something called post-crop vignetting. Now, let me go to the correct tab here. As we see, we have this lens correction, and we can apply an effect called vignetting. You may have seen vignetting in old-fashioned photographs, say of your grandparents, where you had some kind of fade to black in a circular fashion that starts at a focal point. So what we can do here is we can add vignetting by using a slider. So by going to the left we add a little bit of that darkness around the edges. We can also use this midpoint slider to pull it in or push it out. Now the reason this is called post crop vignetting is because let's say we're in regular Photoshop. If we were to apply a vignette by using a elliptical marquee and applying feathering and we crop the image, well, we'd be kind of stuck because the vignetting would also be cropped. So we'd have to undo everything and start again. Well, in the bridge, what we can do in our photographs is choose a focal point such as this rose and the vignetting kind of dims these guys out. So this would be great for like a, a card or a book cover that focuses on the rows and not the people. So what I'm going to do is go to my crop tool and you can see that I can click and hold it down to reveal some ratios. So I can choose 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and more. This will make sure that when I draw with the crop tool the proportions remain exactly to the specification. So if I click and drag a small little boundary it's still going to be 2 to 3 two this way and three this way as far as units. And I'm going to go ahead and extend this quite a bit. So once again the focus is really the flower and not the people. Let's just make believe that this is a story called the rose or something. And I'm going to hit enter or return. The image has been cropped but we've lost a lot of our vignetting on the sides here. Well I can continue to work with that with this guy down here called post crop vignetting. And I can adjust the amount and really bring that back in. So you're never really stuck. You can always go back and add your vignetting either in a positive value or a negative value. You can choose your midpoint so you can kind of make it more intense or a little softer. We can also affect the roundness of this vignette and the feathering. So we can make it pretty much no feathering by going all the way to the left and very soft by going all the way to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And there you have it. That is post crop vignetting and the remainder of the tools in the Camera Raw interface. Keep in mind though that the Camera Raw interface is a plugin and it's not really a part of Photoshop. It's like being inside of your digital camera. Okay, so that is all with the Camera Raw interface experiment with it and also rest assured that you cannot damage your image. You can always come back and adjust the settings at any time.